is getting cold in Paris, man. The weather is not it. it. What is going on guys, Chris here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what is in my camera bag and what has been the camera gear that I've ended 2021 with. Cause I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna buy anything for the rest of the year, at least I hope. So let's just get right into this. First of all, the camera bag. I've been using this for about a year now and I love it. I think I got it last Christmas or so. This is the Douchebags Backpack Pro. It's the big version, it just fits everything. It is super rugged, sturdy, sexy, I might add. A lot of camera bags in the camera bag industry look like camera bags, they look like hiker bags, and it doesn't look sleek. I like the fact that this is all like matte black and it just looks tough, feels really tough. Zippers are nice and responsive, and it's just an amazing bag that I use not only for camera related stuff, but if I need to go to school, uh, I love using it because it does have the sleeve in the back here where I put my computer. Uh, I'll get to that in a moment. And uh, it just fits everything really nicely and it's extremely modular. Uh, and speaking of its modularity, uh, what I really like about it is its whole cube system. And this is the cube that I use for it. This is the cube for the CIA. So it's the smaller cube for the Douchebags backpack. Uh, they have a bigger version that's meant for the pro version. But I prefer the smaller one because it leaves a little space at the top to dump random items. So let's just get right into this. Let's get into the meaty, the fun stuff. The camera, camera I'm shooting on, that's the Canon R5. I've been shooting on it for a little over a month and a half now or so. I should be coming out with a review of it uh, pretty soon. I think I've had it for enough time where I can talk about it in depth. But uh, I love it. I use it for photo, for video. I had the R6, the RP, the R. I've messed around with pretty much all the Canon R lineup. Um, and this is the one that does everything. And when I wanna travel, I don't wanna take a lot of bodies with me. So uh, yeah, the R5 is my workhorse for photo and video. In terms of lenses, it really depends what kind of shoot I'm on and what kind of shoot I'm trying to do. But my main lenses are, first of all, my new vlog lens, the RF 16 millimeters. This is so amazing for vlogging just because it's so small. I was wondering if I was gonna miss having the range from 16 all the way to 35 uh, with the traditional vlogging lens, which almost every vlogger uses with these big bodies. But then I realized, you know, I don't zoom in that much. And when vlogging, I can always, I guess, punch in, especially with the really sharp 4K image from this camera. So having a 16 millimeter RF lens like this that just goes straight onto the R5 without any EF adapters. And the fact that I can control the shutter speed here or whatever setting I want right here is just super convenient and it's so lightweight and it just makes it a dream to vlog and it makes your vlog setup feel really small for the quality you're getting. When I vlogged with the full 16 to 35 and the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus on the R5, the quality was really good, but you know, you would expect that from such a large size. But having a really compact build of the R5 with this small, 16 to 35 is awesome and I love it and it's my new vlogging lens. Next up, Nifty 50. Uh, this is the old version. I use this more than I want to. I want to get a better version of it, something a bit sharper and definitely with better autofocus. Autofocus is actually not that bad. It's just the focus motor itself that's kind of, you know, flimsy and it the, the bzz, bzz movement in and out is just, it's not great, but the lens is decently sharp. I can get away with some pretty sharp images with it and uh, you know, it just works. So that's why it's still in my camera bag. Now obviously I'd have the uh, EF to RF adapter, but it's currently on my camera right now, which uh, is attached to my next lens, which is probably my favorite lens ever. And that is the Sigma Art 24 1.4 uh, Canon lens. Oh. I love that lens. It is so sharp. The build quality just feels amazing and I just love the image that comes out of it. I don't know why, but just its look is so particular and I just love how it looks. And if I have the option to shoot with it, if I need to shoot something that is purely my style, I'll shoot it with this lens because I just love how it looks. So yeah, never gonna get rid of that lens. I love it too much. Uh, and then on the further end, I have really been enjoying the Nyongyu 85 millimeter F1.8 RF mount lens. It is a third party company that makes RF lenses and this lens works like a dream. I have a full review of it, so check it out. I forgot which side that uh, card is gonna be on. Uh, but the autofocus speeds are laser fast. It is tack sharp. Not only does it have what can be used as a control ring, but you can adjust it so that it 
clicks, which is really nice when you're changing things like aperture. And it just works. And I love the fact that my kit or all my lenses are pretty small. I mean, these are three prime lenses, yes, but they're really sharp and they do the trick really well. And when I'm using each one, my build feels really small and light. And I like that. And I don't miss having a bulky big lens. So yeah, that, these are the lenses I use the most. Obviously we have the 24 as well, which is what I'm shooting on. Uh, but for most cases, I take these three when I'm out. Now on my shoots, depending on the shoot, I do like having some sort of B camera. Often I use just my phone, which is just a simple iPhone 12 because the video quality is decent on this if I need to get some an extra angle. Uh, but sometimes I'll take another camera for, I don't know, a thumbnail if I need to take a picture of this camera. So I have been using this really old camera. It's actually my mom's camera. This is a Canon 800D. Uh, I just don't use it that often. I probably actually end up using this for this video's thumbnail, but uh, I rarely take it with me, but sometimes I do. Something I'm embarrassed that I have not been using more is this film camera. I got it when I was in Nice. I'm pretty sure the pictures are gonna look really good, but I've yet to develop anything. I have two more shots, I think, on this roll, then I can get it developed. I even have some spares uh, in the back there, but I just haven't gotten it developed yet. But I've taken pictures with it. I just. <sighs> okay, anyways, sometimes if I just need a more, you know, POV angle or whatever action angle, I have the GoPro Hero 9 black. I didn't get the 10 just because I don't use GoPros that much. And uh, the quality of the 5K out of this looks perfectly fine for me. So, uh, and then finally, the camera I've been using the least, uh, especially because I haven't been traveling anywhere. Lo and behold, the old DJI Mavic Air. I have not upgraded this because I rarely fly it. The image quality is okay. Uh, the connection strength is a little sus. Sometimes it doesn't work very well, but for the little bit I fly my drone, it works. And it's still one of the smallest builds. Uh, the new drones are definitely better in video quality, but they're also much larger in size. And considering I don't fly that much, having a small form factor is still really nice. So yeah, the DJI Mavic Air 1. Uh, once I start traveling again, I'll probably end up upgrading it. But uh, as of right now, still the DJI Mavic Air. Just it's illegal to fly in pairs. So yeah. And obviously it comes with its remote and batteries and all that. For audio, I jump between the Rode Video Micro and the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, depending on the shoot. Uh, if I'm vlogging, this uh, with, like I said before, the 60 millimeter RF is really fun, convenient, it's really tiny. And this microphone definitely matches that form factor more than the Pro Plus does. But if I'm recording more professional audio or if I'm in the studio like this, where I want the best sounding audio, uh, because I feel like the Pro Plus definitely adds a bit more bass, it's a bit more of a rich sound, uh, then I'll use the Pro Plus. But in most case scenarios when I'm outside, I take the micro, it works. It's been working, which is good. Obviously batteries for whatever, that stuff is boring. Obviously I have batteries for all the cameras I need. Now in terms of tripod, I either use the KNF Concept tripod that I have on here, but actually in most case scenarios, I have been enjoying the Switch Pod. I do have a video on that comparing it with the Gorilla Pod. It's just convenient to go from a vlog mode like this to a tripod mode like this and you know, it's just small, lightweight, in my opinion. Um, and it just fits really nice and sleekly in the camera bag. So yeah, there's that. Now, this is something I never use. Never is a strong word. I use it rarely in really particular situations. And that is a gimbal. Uh, this is the Zion Crane, was it the 3S? Something like that. Um, I rarely use this mainly because I don't like using gimbals. When I have the R5 on this and it's nice and balanced and everything, yes, it is good to use. You get some really smooth shots, but I've gotten really good at using the IBIS in this camera and shooting handheld. And I've been doing it for over a year now, years now, like, what am I saying over a year? <laughs> um, and just the time and hassle of setting up a gimbal has never really paid out yet. Uh, but I know there's some shoots down the line that I'll put possibly do that I uh, may require a gimbal or where a gimbal will shine, like maybe shooting out of a car or something like that. 
I have it in case I need it um, because there are some shoots where I'm like, oh, this would have been nice if I didn't have to shoot handheld. Uh, but in most case scenarios, not only does it not come out of my bag, sometimes it doesn't even make it in my bag when I'm out shooting. Now, in terms of small accessory things that are useful, knife, this helps sometimes uh, when uh, you need to cut something. I don't know, there's always something you need to cut or pry open. It's just convenient to have a knife. Next thing, very, very useful nowadays, an L bracket. This is an L bracket from the company Small Rig, I think so. I think, yeah, this is a small rig L bracket for the Canon R5 and the Canon R6 so that I can shoot vertically. In today's time, a lot of stuff is becoming vertical. Vertical content has become such an important part of social media. So uh, having an L bracket is really nice because when I want to fly the camera on the gimbal or, or put it on a tripod, it's just nice to have screws on the side of the camera so I can, you know, have it sit vertically without having to twist my tripod too much. So. L brackets, they're kind of an essential now. Now, sometimes I do like taking a light with me. This is the Aperture MC. I've had this for such a long time now. Uh, I actually have the Godox SL30s, I think those are. Uh, those are actually really fun to use. Uh, they're not nearly as good as this in terms of color accuracy or the magnets, like the magnets on this are really good, but I just like tube lights. I like how they look in video more so than just a square. I'll use this to fill up the background like this um, on the side, but uh, I really enjoy having tube lights. I think they're aesthetically pleasing. So yeah, sometimes I'll bring a light depending on the shoot. It really just depends. The next thing I've been using a lot and enjoying a lot, iPad mini. This is the iPad mini six, just came out this year and I love it for photo editing. I got it for photo editing because I needed something that I can edit photos with that wasn't my phone. And I hate editing on my computer. Not having a larger display than my phone is really nice. Yes, they're bigger iPads, but I didn't want something that was basically another laptop. I wanted something that was, yes, bigger and had a larger display, but still had a small form factor and I could easily fit in my bag without adding twice as much weight as my MacBook. Which leads to my next device, the MacBook Pro. This obviously comes with me everywhere. Uh, not only this, but the Samsung T5 SSD. This is one terabyte. This is where I used to edit all my videos on. Uh, I never use the internal storage of my computer, but this is, yeah, the M1 MacBook Pro. It is not the new 16 or 14 inch M1X or M1 Pro MacBooks. Uh, it is the older 2020 M1 13 inch MacBook Pro, and it edits the R5 uh, and the previous R6 files perfectly well, so I didn't really feel any pressures or needs to upgrade. I think those computers would deal better with the, uh, the 8K files that the R5 shoots, because I did edit an 8K video with this, and it was a little difficult, not bad at all, considering it was 8K, but uh, the anything in 4K, this edits it super easily, and I just like the fact that it's not that big, uh, and it fits in my camera bag really easily. Now obviously in the camera bag is gonna have the dongles, the, the thing, the adapters and this and that just to plug everything in, but I feel like that stuff is kind of boring. One thing I do like the fact that I have sneakily in my bag is this little bad boy. This is an Apple AirTag, thanks to my brother who had extra ones, so he let me borrow this one. Uh, in case I ever leave my bag somewhere or someone tries to steal it, I will know where it is. So convenient, and I just kind of leave it in there and I just forget it's in there and yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Hopefully this was inspiring for you to waste more money on some camera gear that you probably don't need. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. I'm a sound dog, fool, no kibbles, just to give me some skill.